So about two years ago, I made a video on the collapse of the Huber H. Humphrey Metrodome in my old video series called Abandoned History. Since I don't use that video series or title anymore, I thought it'd be really interesting to update this video to some of my newer, more modern standards and add some new information and photos mixed in with some of that original content because there's a lot of good information there. So enjoy this remastered version of Abandoned History episode 20-something, The Collapse of the Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome. The Metrodome was conceived after the AFL-NFL merger. The Vikings had previously been playing in Metropolitan Stadium, which had a capacity of 48,500. The NFL had set a standard that all stadiums must have a capacity of 50,000 by the time of the merger. The city of Minneapolis decided that their Vikings and Twins teams needed a new stadium to share, something that could keep fans warm in the cold, blustery Minnesota winters. Similar in design to the Pontiac Silverdome near Detroit and the RCA Dome in Indianapolis, the Metrodome would use high-pressure air to support the roof, which is made of Teflon-coated fiberglass. The outside of the Teflon membrane was 1 32nd inches thick, and the inside was 1 64th inches thick. The entire structure weighed a whopping 580,000 pounds, and reached as high as 16 stories off the ground. The unique design of the roof was a miracle of modern technology, but had a few drawbacks, including the constant need to maintain air pressure to support the roof. In order for this pressure to be maintained, revolving doors were used to enter and exit the structure in order to maintain this constant pressure. And the first roof collapse happened on November 19, 1981. Rapid accumulation of snow caused the roof to collapse on itself. The building was then simply reinflated as there is no major tears in the roof. This happened five times throughout the 1980s and led to new precautions being implemented. All of these precautions were to try to melt snow off the roof to keep that pressure and weight off of it, and so these precautions included pumping hot air in between the two layers of the membrane, as well as having workers go out onto the top of the roof and melt the snow with steam. The faithful year of 2010 began with an inspection in April. The Metropolitan Sports Facilities Commission inspected and gave the roof a rating. The outer membrane was noted as holding up well, but the inner lining was rated as fair to poor. The roof of the Metrodome was designed to have a life of around 20 years, so at this point it was already nearly 8 years past its operating life. The inside of the roof had several holes and tears, with some damage caused by auto show emissions which had been held inside the dome over the years. Despite these findings, the commission made no recommendations and simply decided to inspect it again in another four years. The fifth largest snowstorm on record for Minnesota struck on December 10th and 11th, 2010, with around 17 inches of snow falling at the Twin Cities International Airport. Rapid accumulation had collapsed the Metrodome before, but nothing quite like this. With the wind blowing rapidly and snows falling steadily, the snow removal crew had to be recalled from the roof for their safety. The center of the roof had started to sag that night under the immense pressure of the snow on top. Fox Sports decided to leave their cameras rolling overnight and captured the incredible footage of the collapse of the dome. The snow would come pouring in and turn the indoor stadium into an outdoor winter wonderland. The damage to the inside of the dome was minor, with only some lighting structures and seats standing to be replaced. The actual turf field survived the incident thanks to built-in drainage. In an unprecedented move, the NFL moved the Vikings game to Detroit as a neutral site for the Vikings and Giants to play. The Vikings had to find alternate locations for the rest of their games that season. The roof was declared a total loss and a new one had to be installed at a cost of $18 million. The repairs took over 8 months with the stadium being reinflated on June 13th 2011. This new roof proved to be more stable than the old one, and had no issues up until its demolition three years later. Paying $18 million for a new roof that was used for only three years is even more shocking when you take into account that the stadium was built for only $68 million. The old Metrodome refused to die as demolition hit many setbacks and took a couple months for the building to finally fall on February 13th, 2014 to make way for the new U.S. Bank Stadium. 
this time a stadium without an air bubble roof. So I hope you enjoyed that remastered episode of the Metrodome Collapse. I tried to remove any parts that I thought really weren't relevant or with the story, and then I wanted to record a new intro because the old outro and intro were not very good. And it's really interesting to see my old graphics package that really light powdery blue and now it just kind of used that silver. Uh, tell me, do you like the old style? Do you like the new style? Did you enjoy the video? I sure hope you did. As always, this is Matt from the Archive of Everything, and I'll see you all real soon.